Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be starting episode 4 in our new series, The Hitchhiker's Guide to D2R Modding. Uh, we're going to be going over item names, item colors, uh, changing item colors depending on item quality, things like that, um, some of the known limits. Uh, if you haven't been watching this series before, we are diving into everything Diablo 2 Resurrected, um, covering it from A to Z, and we will be going more in depth uh, into certain topics as the videos progress, uh, but we are starting out with some of the more basic stuff to give you a good overview of how things work. Um, with all that boring stuff out of the way, um, make sure you get like and subscribed, and let's roll right into it. Um, so as I said, we're going to be talking about item colors and different streams. This also applies to levels, monsters, things, uh, skills, things like that. Um, but before we dive into the actual edits, let's just go over a quick overview so we're all on the same page with limits and stuff. Um, now, these are plain text files, um, so you don't need any special programs. You can use Notepad if you wanted, um, although I usually do recommend something like Visual Studio Code just to make things easy, uh, since we recommend that for JSON files in general. Um, you can use color codes. Uh, color codes are a special series of characters um, hard-coded for Diablo 2 that will allow you to give uh, different text, uh, you know, whatever color is kind of supported or that you may like. Um, so, for example, if I were to type these three characters in before my text, all that text would then appear red. Um, another thing to note is that every string um, every kind of entry of text will have a unique ID attached to it. Um, and these IDs are shared between all the different JSON files. So if you're using an ID of, let's say, 50,000 for um, a new item that you created, um, you can't use ID 50,000 uh, for a monster that you created. They're, they're all shared, um, so that monster would have to use the next ID available. Um, and then finally, your IDs are limited to 65,535. While they will technically work um, at ID uh, values higher than this, um, when the game actually runs and think to De uh, Diablo 2 processes um, that ID value, um, anything kind of overflow um, is just going to be a modulus of 0 to 65, uh, 535. So, um, essentially, what I mean is if you have an ID higher than that, let's say it's 65, 536, it's now going to overwrite uh, ID 1. Um, so we, you just need to make sure that you stay under the 65,000 limit, um, and that's really it as far as strings go. Um, so with that said, let's just jump right into one of the actual edits, and we'll see how it all works. Um, so to do that, we're going to grab all the files we need from CASC. Um, now, as you uh, might have guessed, I've already done all this. Um, the files we do need, I'll go ahead and show you. Uh, we're going to, for our strings, we're going to look in local, language, and then strings. And so I'll go ahead and uh, show you those. So for our example purposes, we're going to be editing item names as well as a monster name. Um, but obviously, if you're editing skills or you're adding a new level or uh, maybe changing some of the panel names, whatever, um, you'll have different files that you want to edit uh, as far as for the text for that goes. Um, but these are the two files we're going to use in this video just as an example. It works identically for all the others. Um, and then we're also going to grab, um, now that we've grabbed our actual string files, uh, the next thing we'll want to do is go to data global UI layouts. And we're going to want to grab profile hd.json, and that's going to allow us to change item colors by their quality. Um, so we'll go ahead and drag that out as well. And now we have all three files we'll be editing in this video. Um, so the first thing we'll show is how to edit the strings themselves. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, item names here, and we'll show you how that works. Um, so when you first open it up, it'll look something like this. Um, and again, we'll just go over the, the basic parts here. So you have your unique ID number. Again, this is going to be shared between all the JSON files. So if you're adding in a new entry here, just make sure um, that you're just using a new ID number. Um, for the key, this is either going to be uh, in this 
uh, JSON, you're going to see a lot of these are going to be the item code. Um, it might be a unique item, um, in which case you're going to see the key as being like the uh, closer to the item name. Uh, these are all defined in dot .text in your uh, name str column or vice versa. Um, so that's where you'll find that. Um, and then you'll have the actual languages um, where it breaks down what the in-game text is going to say. Um, and uh, to add a new entry, um, what we need to do is just come down to the bottom here. And what you'll see is that every entry up until the last one is going to have a comma. Um, and that tells the JSON file itself to keep reading. Um, so the most important thing to do is that when you go to add a new entry, so we're going to go ahead and, you know, copy all this so we can paste it and add a new entry, is that you just need to make sure that you add a comma before you paste everything in. Um, and again, that just tells the, the JSON file to keep reading. Without that comma, you're going to get like an error here, um, and it's just going to stop reading the file at this point. So you could have 100 entries past this, and it's not going to read any of them. Uh, because it doesn't know to keep reading. So make sure you have that comma, and then we are we are going to give it a new ID. So we're going to give it an ID of something like 50,000. Um, this gives us a nice buffer gap between what Vanilla uses, what Blizzard uses um, for their IDs, um, as well as what we need. Um, this is important because when uh, Blizzard releases an update, like the recent patch 2.4, for example, and they add, let's say, a thousand new string IDs over all the files, um, you don't want to have to be redoing all of yours um, because now their IDs have kind of replaced yours. Um, so we just want to give ourselves a nice big gap um, that we can start from so that you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, so if you remember in our last video, um, we made a few changes. One of them being that we visually made a hand axe look like a U wand. Um, and what we're going to do here is just change the name of that, that new axe, if you will, um, to something different, just to kind of show you how that works. Um, now, obviously, the um, game already has a string for that axe. Again, the item code is HAX um, for hand axe. So if I were to search for that, here is the string reference for that. Um, now, just because I want to show you uh, a new entry uh, in the string kind of working, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to HAX2 for the key. Um, and this key doesn't exist, um, so it won't kind of pull up anything now. And now when we add in our entry, um, it kind of won't conflict with that. So again, our key is going to be HAX. And we're going to rename it something like a derpy axe. Because obviously it's a hand axe, but it looks like a wand, so that's pretty derpy. And we'll just go ahead and save that. We're all set with changing our item name. Uh, another change we made in the last episode was we made uh, Fallen from Act 1 Bloodmore um, look like a Diablo. Um, and you can see the Fallen entry here. Um, for this one, we won't add a new one. I'll just show you how to replace it um, with some item uh, colors. Um, so instead of calling it Fallen, uh, why don't we just call this Derpy Diablo? Because, uh, again, he is still a Fallen underneath, um, even though he looks like Diablo. And let's give it some colors, like uh, we'll give it orange. So we'll put this before the text. So now all of this will be orange. But let's change it halfway just to be annoying. So let's make it blue for the word Diablo. So now it's going to be the word orange, or I'm sorry, <laughs> the word derpy in orange and the word Diablo in blue. And we can go ahead and save that. And then finally, I'm going to show us um, how to change kind of item name colors um, by quality. Uh, and so an example of that is maybe socketed items. Uh, maybe you don't want them to appear gray. Maybe you wanted them as a different color. This can be an example of how to do those changes. Um, so there's really two sections we care about. Um, the first is kind of the color section. Um, this file is going to break down a lot of the uh, panel elements 
um, font settings, things like that, um, that Diablo 2 Resurrected uses. And in this section is where it defines the exact color shades and what colors are defined. Um, so every color is going to have an RGB uh, value. Um, if you use Photoshop or any kind of color chart website before, um, you'll know that this is just a number between 0 and 255 that will define your, your exact color. Um, so what we'll do is we're just going to kind of we can edit an existing one or you know leave them alone, but we want to be difficult and add our own font color. So we're just going to copy that, paste it, and let's change it to something Diablo 2 doesn't normally have, pink. So let's say you're a real fan of pink. Um, I believe the RGB for that's going to be something like 255, 5, 210. Um, so now we've added a new definition for font color pink in, and we've told it the exact shade to use. Uh, this um, A entry is for alpha, that's just kind of like the transparency. Um, we'll just kind of leave that at 255 for, for full color, no transparency. Um, now that we've done that, the next part we care about um, is going to be uh, the actual item quality section. Uh, so for this, we're just going to do a search for quest color. Um, and if we search that, we'll see this kind of section here. Um, and this gives us defined variables where we can change the colors. Um, so you can see for ethereal, for sockets, sets, um, you can kind of adjust that here. Now this will work only while they're on the ground. Once you pick the item up, it's going to use whatever string is found uh, in the JSON file here. Um, but while it's on the ground, its color will be replaced by whatever is set here. So for our purposes uh, and examples, we're going to change the socket of color. And instead of gray, we want it to use our new pink. So we're going to apply that and save it. So we've made all our changes. Now we're going to go ahead and just start the mod and uh, make sure everything's working correctly. So I guess the first thing we'll do is just check our axe real quick. And there we go. So we got our derpy axe. Um, so the name now uh, is edited correctly. Let's go check on our Diablo. Make sure both the name and the colors have applied. Come on, Diablo. Where are you hiding? He knows I'm making a video. He's trying to hide from me. Not fair. There we are. And there we go. So just like uh, we told it, it has the word Derpy in orange and the word Diablo in blue. Um, and then finally, let's uh, look at a socketed item. So uh, I purchased a socketed um, axe from the vendor uh, off camera. Um, but I'm going to just go ahead and drop that, and you can see it comes up as pink when it's on the ground to indicate our changes that we told it. But as soon as we pick it up, it appears whatever um, uh, item color the JSON file for that string um, told it. Uh, so again, pink on the ground, as soon as you pick it up, now it's going to be the JSON format. So if you wanted it pink in JSON also, you'd have to edit the um, hand axe to have pink text. Um, but again, those were the three edits um, that we kind of expanded upon in our previous episode and show you how you can uh, change things further as far as the streams go. Um, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video. I know it can get a little long-winded sometimes, uh, but I hope this has helped you tie some things together and make sure you stay tuned for the next episode and we dive a little deeper. Take care.